Hi Plastube, it's Leah Noel, Aviatrix Stitcher. I'm back after only a week and this video should be relatively short so um, I just thought I've been stitching a little bit and I have some time today so why not just do a little update, make it a little bit shorter. Um, so I guess um, yeah if you're if you're a returning visitor, thanks for coming back, and if you've never been here to my channel before, uh, this is where I talk about cross stitch, and I would love it if you left me a comment so we can get to know each other a little bit. Um, so today I'm going to start out with uh, just a little bit of information about sound, um, sound quality. So if you ever have problems with floss tube videos maybe being a little bit too quiet there is something that you can do if you are using an iPhone and um, not my not part two but part one um, I had mentioned that I was a little frustrated with um, a microphone that I was trying to use uh, and I got a lot of good information or good feedback from you all saying that you can hear me just fine and I'm really glad to hear that. Um, I am still gonna try to get a microphone but anyways uh, Don Frosty X Stitch left me a very helpful comment uh, s describing how you can get your iPhone to help you hear better. Um, and I just thought I would walk you through it because I have an iPhone. Um, I actually don't watch Flosstube on my iPhone. I watch it on my computer, but so let me log in here. First, you want to see my little kitty cat. <laughs> All right. So on your screen, you're going to want to select settings. Now, you go to the search bar, which I believe you just drag the screen down a little bit and the search bar comes up. And in the search bar, you want to type sound check. So I'll do that, sound check. So this is what comes up if you have, if you type in sound check. You select that. Okay, now you see that screen. Now you look for the playback heading. So here's the playback heading. Okay, EQ, you want to select late night. Ooh, late night. Okay, I'm not going to do it because, because I'm not trying to watch floss tubes on my iPhone um, but then volume limit you want to select volume limit limit and you want this um, to be off so you would just drag it all the way down here or if I don't know if you can hang on a second you might be able to just yep you can just touch so one touch off or that doesn't work the other way this is this would be on so you want it off and Dawn said that um, that just helps when she's listening to floss tube videos um, if there if there are any that are like where the volume is just too loud or too low if you adjust these settings you won't have a problem at all and she said she hasn't had a problem with any video she's watched ever since. So thank you, John, very much for sharing that information, and I hope that that's helpful for anybody. Um, I will put it down below. I'll just, you know, I'll type out the instructions so you don't have to sit here and watch my video while you try to adjust your settings. Um, and that's, that's all I wanted to start out with. So um, since I, since last week, I have only worked on a few things, um, starting with 
my stocking. This is a stocking um, that I work on every Sunday with Stitching Becca. And um, I was able to make some pretty good progress this week, actually. Here I am. So that's looking pretty good. Um, I basically started filling in, I filled in some more like snow, parts of snow in his body and in his face. And then um, I started this dark shading here and I added this brown. Um, these stitches are all four or five strands of half stitch and uh, you can see that the stocking, the whole blue, dark blue area is the same kind of stitching. Um, four to five strands, half stitches, and I think I am not going to have any padding anymore on my fingers when this is done. It's just going to be down to the bone. Um, yeah, Becca told me to get a thimble, and I probably should do that. Um, I just never think about it. Like, when I'm when I'm shopping, I just never think, oh, I need a thimble. I just, I should probably just write it down. But, anyway. Um, the other thing that I worked on that I had a lot of really good progress on is my bunny. Um, this is Bunny in Cup by um, Maria Bravko. She is on Etsy. Made really good progress with this. So I'm really happy with that. Since you saw it last, um, basically I made most of the cup and I filled in most of the pink on the ears. Um, yeah, starting to see the gold rim on the bottom and top and yeah, it's looking pretty good. I still have not um, even thought about what font I'm going to put. Um, what, I, what I'm, font I'm going to use on the top and the bottom. And um, if you missed my my update about that, it's it's going to it's going to say um, I'm going to put up on top. First, I drink the coffee, then I do the things, um, and that is going to be for my husband for his workspace. Uh, like I'm going to frame it, put it right next to their coffee pot. Uh, so all of his co-workers can enjoy it too. A bunch of guys, mostly. So that's that's going to be fun. Um, and then, let's see, I also worked on Folk Santa. And this is an X's and O's chart. I am doing a full conversion. All of the yellow turns to blue, um, and there's a bunch of yellow in there. So I, I also um, I also opted to take all of the oranges too, uh, and turn those to purple. So instead of a red to yellow, this is going to be a red to blue, which is why I chose purple and not green. Um, this is coming along very well. Um, so, since you saw this last, I added the collar. Um, I did the cream first, like the white part first, because um, if you stitch the white first, you don't have to pull the white through next to a darker color and your white won't pick up that darker color so I did all the white first and then I started adding some purples and then I also added a little bit of um, dark blue and light blue in here um, I am liking how it's turning out um, I do question if this purple is a little bit too dark because if you see the pattern here, oops, 
that yellow that I'm replacing is sort of brighter um, and a little bit more like the cream that it's next to but I don't know I think I think for now I'm just going to keep it and let it be a learning lesson whether I like it or not you know um, I think I do like it it's just gonna be like not a perfect color conversion but I think it'll be close enough so there's that Thanks everyone who's cheering me on for that. That's, it's definitely a leap of faith, you know. And the last thing I worked on is my polar bears kit, but honestly, I just put in one tiny strand and you really can't tell um, where it is. And also I forgot to bring it here to my little corner. So I am going to save that for another day. Um, it is on Instagram though, if you want to see. But honestly, you, you probably wouldn't be able to tell where the progress was. So, um, then I will share. Um, this is a Christmas gift that I forgot to show in my part one and two update. <laughs> um, it is a huge tote bag that I got for... Um, for Christmas from my mom and I think in her mind she was thinking that I was going to use it as a purse um, or as like a backpack for school or something um, because she she got this airplane um, on the front and it's a really I mean it's a nice it's a good quality bag I think it's a 31 bag uh, if you know if you're familiar with that company so um, it, it actually is pretty sturdy and I do like it a lot, but when I saw it, I was like, uh, that would be perfect to carry around all of my cross-stitching supplies. So, um, it's empty now because I took everything out, but inside it's just m mostly open and then I have like some pockets, um, on the inside, on the inside sides and then on the outside there's like these side pockets here. So, um. It's just very handy and um, that's what I've been using now to travel with like I can fit I can fit a couple projects in there like I mean even even three or four if they're not too bulky so that's been nice to use um, and I got a package in the mail I think I had I think I had um, mentioned when I when I showed this chart, um, this is this is the chart that I'm going to be stitching for my other sister, the older of the two, um, and I think I had mentioned that I ordered the fabric for this and it didn't arrive in a very timely manner, but that's just because um, I, I ordered it from stonycreek.com and it was during their Super Bowl sale. Everything was 20% off and they had the fabric that I wanted, so I ordered it and here it is. And I'll just hold it up to the picture so you can kind of see um, how it fares in person versus the photo. I'd say the photo is a lot brighter blue, um, but that's just, you know, that's, that's photography. It's always going to be a little bit different, especially blues. Blues are just notoriously difficult to photograph. Um, just really, really hard to get the true colors. So, um, even, even in this video, I'd say the fabric looks a little bit more gray than what it is in true life. Um, so, but there is a difference and you can see that. So this is, this is what's called for in the fabric or in the, uh, in the pattern. It's a, it's a 28 count cashel smoky pearl linen, just fat quarter. So, um, so that came, and the reason why it took so long, I was going to say, um, their, so their Super Bowl sale, it wasn't until I placed my order that I got the notification that it might take three to four weeks to ship out because, um, when they do a sale, 
like that on their website. Um, they don't have a way to, um, I guess, like, it's not like live in inventory. So if multiple people order the same thing and they only have a limited stock, they don't have enough to fill all the orders, then they would just order from their supplier and then, you know, hold the rest of your order until they ship out the rest. So, I don't know. I, I don't really care, actually, but it was uh, uh, slightly annoying not to know that before I placed the order. Um, so I just thought I would give a heads up um, in case, I think they do, I think they do um, sales like that semi-regularly. I mean, if they're doing one for Super Bowl, I'm sure they're doing one for all of the major holidays too. So um, I would just, I would just keep that in mind um, if you need something right away that you should leave an, a note on your order to ship partially or, um, I don't know, verify if they have inventory. Uh, that wouldn't help though because of the problem. So I don't know. I'm just something to be aware of, which is why I'm mentioning it. So um, while I was there on the website, I did pick up um, these glosses for my Chatelaine. And I thought I would also show you a picture of the Chatelaine that I am doing. Um, this is going to be started sometime probably in May when school is out. I got the hard copy um, because it was, I think it was like half off or something and I'm, yep, but, so um, I thought I would also share a little bit about how, how the kitting out process is going. Um, I think I, I don't know, I don't know if I will kit up the flosses myself again. Um, it might just be worth it to go through European Cross Stitch for um, a full kit or somewhere else that maybe offers a full kit. But so far I've been able to order all of my flosses at a discount and I have been able to add them on to an order that I was already placing. So I wasn't paying more shipping than what I already would be paying in shipping for those other things. Um, so, okay, so the biggest hurdle that I've had so far is just picking out a fabric. Um, the, the design kind of, it, it leaves it wide open. The design says that you can use 28 or 32 count and it says you can use any fabric that you want. You know, it can be light or dark, it can be whatever, it can be solid, it can be um, modeled, you know, it can be multicolored, whatever you want. It's totally wide open. And I, I like that um, because I would pick my own fabric anyway, probably, because that's just what my stitching style is turning out to be. Um, so anyway, I really needed some some help um, just because my thoughts can get a little bit loud and um, I argue with myself a lot so I just needed um, someone to intervene in my brain and I reached out to my friend Mev and um, Mev stitches in Paris and together we have been <laughs> we've just been talking in depth about fabric choices and what it would do to the design and um, like what aspects were really gonna come out and um, you know what might get hidden a little bit with certain color choices and um, the process has been really really fun um, and she was extra sweet and she sent me some fabric samples of two colors that we were considering so I'll show them here um, here is 32 count Haunted Belfast uh, by Picture This Plus. Let me put this behind it. So Haunted um, turned out not to be the, the color that I'm going with um, just because I think this one um, to me looks a little bit too murky for the design. 
Um, but I have an idea for this piece of fabric um, because when I saw it I thought, hmm, I think my octopus, my ink circles octopus design will go well on this. Um, it would go this way. So um, it is a little green also. Trying to, I'm just trying to tell from here if if the colors. Um, I think actually this is pretty true. It's showing pretty true on the on the video. And then here is Gothic Belfast, also by Picture This Plus. Um, and this is not going to be right either um, because. It's just a little bit too dark and the dragonflies would get lost, um, but the lace would look awesome on this. Um, and seeing this in person actually made me um, want this for my polar bear Santa that I showed. Uh, I don't remember if it was the last video or the one before that, part one or two. Um, but the polar bear kit, um, I... I just ordered some Ada, some 16 count Ada in this gothic. But this piece of fabric particularly, I have a sneaky surprise uh, in mind for this one. So um, that's all I'll say about that. And then the other two fabrics that we were considering, um, one was, oh shoot, I think it was like Lazarite by Chromatic Alchemy. Um, that one was more like the gothic fabric. It was more, it was a rich blue. Um, and then the one that I ended up purchasing just today actually um, is a Picture This Plus Heather. Um, so I'm pretty excited to get that. Um, <clears throat> so when I was trying to figure out what kind of fabric to purchase for Chatelaine, um, I yeah, so I, I talked about the colorway with Mev a lot, and then um, I also got some good advice from a lot of people about the fabric count to select, um, especially Lynette W helped me a lot. Um, she advised me to go with an even weave or a high quality linen, because with the mandala, um, you know, a mandala design is very even. It's exactly 318 stitches by 318 stitches. So if I, if I were to go with a, like a lower quality linen, like MGC textiles, um, it, you know, it might come out more as a rectangle instead of a square. Um, so she, she highly recommended the even weave. So I actually did take that advice. I ordered the, um, I ordered 32 count Lugana. I was really, really hesitant to order 32 count um, because she also cautioned that um, 28 count is better for heavily beaded areas. Um, and <clears throat> I, I like 28 count, but I just thought for this, for this large of a piece, um, I do prefer 32 count. I like the coverage a little bit better. Um, and I, so, I don't know. I also reached out to Stitching Farmer. She makes videos. Um, I actually thought I would maybe do a spotlight mention for Stitching Farmer. Um, she is someone who does a lot of chatelines. Um, well, I don't know about a lot. She, well, a lot. Um, she is working on several chatelaines right now and several mir mirabilias and what i like about her videos is um she'll show you her progress but then she will also show you a close-up of all the specialty stitches and all of the really um you know the smaller motifi areas um that you really wouldn't get that sort of detail unless you were in person and so I really really enjoy watching her videos because I love to see those close-ups um, in video format like you can see you can see close-ups um, on Instagram usually people post close-up 
photos and um, I've even <laughs> I've even requested that people show uh, close-up photos of their their shadow lines just because they're so detailed and um, they're just such a pleasure to look at you know so so anyway um, stitching farmer I'll link her below and go check her out um, she helped me find on the European crustic crustage um, website that they sell their kit, their dragonfly lace mandala kit with 32 count fabric. So I thought, well, I think I'll be okay. And then Mev also said that um, there should be some smaller beads uh, available if I run into a problem where they're just too congested and and hard to put on or something, you know, I can just use some smaller beads. So I'm just kind of going out on a limb, um, going with my gut feeling about the fabric choice and the count, and um, I'm just going to rely heavily on um, on other stitchers who are just more um, experienced, and I'm just so thankful to have people you know, in my, in my stitching life that I can call on for help. So, um, Lynette also mentioned that there is a Facebook group for Chatelaine support. I think it's called Chatelaine support group. So I'm really not on Facebook anymore, but I did, um, I did go ahead and request access to that group. And I, I put my feelers out a little bit about the fabric count there too. Um, but yeah, like I said, I'm, I'm not really on Facebook anymore, so that's not going to be a regular thing for me unless I get stuck again. Um, just look at my notes here. That's all I have for today. Um, I hope you enjoyed this shorter update. I think I definitely did because it was a lot less work for me. And, um, oh, market, market is today. Uh, yeah, market. Oh, I wanted to say, um, Pictureless Plus is having a sale on their new releases. It's 20% off today um, on their new release fabrics. And then um, I also went directly to the Pictureless Plus website and I signed up for their newsletter and I got a coupon for 10% off my first order with them. And um, I sort of knew for the last few days that I wanted to order this um, Heather fabric for my Chatelaine, but I thought I would wait until today to see what their market releases are, and I'm glad I did because one of them is definitely going to have a home here. Um, and what's best is I was able to use both the 20% off of that um, new release fabric and then also the 10% off for my first order. Um, so um, when I get that, it should be probably probably three to four weeks, I'm guessing, before I'll get that in the mail because it's um, special dyed, but I just thought I'd put that out there in case anyone else is interested in getting 10% off their first order. Sign up for their newsletter. Um, yeah, so I hope that um, everyone who's going to market is going to have a great time. I would really love to go there sometime myself just to look around and shop. Um, and if you're like me and you're just stuck at home, uh, watching Instagram videos and YouTube videos about market, um, yeah, I'm in the same boat, just kind of drooling over here. And then, um, my mom is coming tonight and that's pretty exciting because she doesn't usually have Fridays off. Um, so she has the day off and she was able to start driving, so she's on her way now. And what is super exciting is she'll be able to see the red work, the finished red work house that I have for her. So, so it'll be exciting. Um, all right, friends, that's it. Uh, I hope everyone's doing well. And I hope to put more short videos up like this more often. So just to stay in touch better. All right, take care.